Welcome to the XPR 6-month check sheet informational video. This short video will cover the steps needed to complete the XPR 6-month check sheet. By performing the 6-month check, you may find small problems before they impact production. These checks also help ensure good cut quality and longer problem-free operation. This video covers checks for the XPR system that should be done every 6 months, but does not include checks that may be suggested by the table manufacturer. The six-month check for the XPR plasma power supply is focused on replacing the coolant and filters. Use the XPR preventative maintenance instruction manual as a guide to prepare for the coolant change. Some items you will need include the XPR six-month preventative maintenance kit, a container to drain the coolant into, a 3 8 inch or 9.525 millimeter inner diameter flexible drain tube, an M6 10 millimeter hex nut driver, compressed air, and wrenches. To begin, remove power from the XPR plasma power supply and cutting system. Remove the right external panel from the plasma power supply. First, the old coolant from the coolant reservoir needs to be removed. Connect the flexible tube to the fitting located at the bottom of the coolant reservoir. Put the other end of the tube into an empty container. Be sure to use a container that holds the approximate total coolant volume of your cutting system. Open the valve located on the bottom of the reservoir. Remove the cap on the reservoir inlet to allow coolant to flow out of the reservoir. Next, remove the old coolant from the heat exchanger. Keep the flexible tube connected to the outlet of the valve on the bottom of the reservoir. Remove the red banded coolant return hose from the rear of the plasma power supply. Attach compressed air, no more than 6.89 bar or 100 psi, to the coolant return hose fitting on the rear of the plasma power supply where the red banded coolant return hose was previously connected. For no more than 30 seconds, use the compressed air to blow all the coolant back into the reservoir and filter housing. Caution: System components need the coolant to lubricate rotating surfaces. If air flows through the cutting system for longer than 30 seconds, it can eliminate the coolant necessary for lubrication. After 30 seconds, close the valve at the bottom of the coolant reservoir. Leave the red banded coolant return hose disconnected from the rear of the plasma power supply. Place the container under the coolant pump plug. Remove the plug and screen from the pump and set aside for later. Remove the green banded coolant supply hose from the rear of the plasma power supply. Attach compressed air, no more than 3.45 bar or 50 psi, to the coolant supply hose fitting on the rear of the plasma power supply where the green banded coolant supply hose was previously connected. For no more than 30 seconds, use the compressed air to blow all the coolant into the container. Leave the green banded coolant supply hose disconnected. Next, clean the coolant pump screen. Rinse with water if you find debris. If any damage is found, replace it. Install the new or serviced pump screen into the pump. Wipe the O-ring on the plug. Make sure that the O-ring is free of debris, cracks, and nicks. Install the plug on the coolant pump housing. Next is the removal of the old coolant from the filter housing and a replacement of the coolant filter. Remove the filter housing from inside the plasma power supply. Discard all the coolant from inside the filter housing. Remove and discard the coolant filter. Examine the filter housing for debris. Rinse the filter housing to remove any debris if found. Install a new coolant filter. Install the filter housing. The next step is to remove the old coolant from hoses and leads. The hoses and leads hold a large volume of coolant that may contaminate the new coolant if this step is skipped. First, place the disconnected red banded coolant return hose into a bucket. Attach compressed air, no more than 6.89 bar, or 100 psi to the disconnected end of the green banded coolant supply hose. For approximately three minutes, inject compressed air into the coolant supply hose fitting to force coolant out of the red banded coolant return hose and into an empty container. After three minutes, look for coolant flow out of the red banded coolant return hose. Repeat this process until coolant flow from the red banded coolant return hose stops. When coolant flow from the red banded coolant return hose stops, connect both hoses to the rear of the plasma power supply. The last step is to install new coolant into the plasma power supply. 
reference the plasma system's instruction manual to fill the system with the correct coolant amount. Pour the coolant into the reservoir until the coolant level gets to the base of the fill spout. Install the cap onto the coolant reservoir. Remove the tubing from the plasma power supply and install the exterior panels on the plasma power supply. Supply power to the cutting system. Use the CNC or XPR web interface to send a process to the plasma power supply and start the coolant pump. If necessary, add more coolant to fill the reservoir to the base of the fill spout. This concludes the video on performing the XPR 6 month check. Thank you for watching this video. For other XPR videos and more, please log on to the Hypertherm Cutting Institute.